Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory Update 8. And on this episode, we are continuing our Mega Factory 2.0 build. And we are reaching closer and closer to our goal of the 500 gigawatt nuclear power plant. So first off, we've got our cheap silica factory tower that we've got set up over by our concrete manufacturing facility and then after cheap silica we head over to our crystal oscillator factory where we're slapping together some manufacturers cranking together everything we need for getting our crystal oscillators built and they're being dumped into an awesome sink finally we're finishing it off with our heavy modular frame factory that is using a alternate recipe to be able to build our heavy alternate frames but we'll get into that when we get further down here so sit back relax and let's jump into it first things first with building our cheap silica factory is we need to find the perfect location for it and it's got to be accessible to some quartz crystal because we need uh, concrete and or sorry we need limestone and quartz crystal to be able to pull this off well, I have found just the spot. It's just a little tricky to get to. Down into the bowels of this planet, we do have access to a pure quartz node down here. It's just, you gotta fight your way down into here. There are some spiders that you've gotta watch out for. And you gotta, of course, hunt around because it is a little bit tricky to get around in this area to know exactly where it is. And I think it's actually, if I go down this way and we turn around a couple of corners here, there's also, I believe there's also a pure um, SAM uh, ore deposit down here somewhere as well too. But this is our pure quartz node that we're gonna end up using. There's also a normal quartz node that's just over there if we ended up needing more, but we're gonna pull it from, oh, and here we are with our spiders that we've got to take care of. And these guys, I hate the spiders. Like, I'm sorry, but they jump now. They're just nasty little critters to have to deal with. One other thing that I've noticed, and this is uh, some type of a glitch that's happening down here with uh, Update 8, is these uh, piles of rock that have some growth on it, they're showing up as foliage. You hit E to pick it up. You don't pick up anything, but it disappears. But... The plants and everything are still growing up on top of it, which is a little on the bizarre side. But anyhow, from here, there's another cave this way that we head out to where our location will be for our cheap silica factory. So here we're making our progress through the cave system here that we're going to be using to exit out and head over to our build site. And what do we have? We've got a bunch of stuff in the way here. We've got to blast our way through this wall. And that was like the world's worst slow. That was so pathetic. <laughs> Trying to throw these novelists. I'm actually going to throw a few of these around and we're going to make a little bit of a bang over here to try to clear out this spot. And this should be hopefully enough that we can get through anyway. Everything is all blasted out of there. And did we get through? Is that enough to get through? It is not. We need some more yet. But I might have to wait for some of these to despawn yet so we can actually see the stone we're throwing this on. Okay, all that mess is gone now. We can throw a few more novelists here just to clear the last of this path. And we are th kind of through, sort of. Oh, now I'm trapped in it. Okay, maybe you shouldn't fly into the debris when it's all tumbling down like that. And we're coming out this way and then just off the other side of this uh, elder, this uh, conveyor system that's here that's hauling our limestone over to our, our concrete factory. Right in this area here is where we're going to be building our cheap silica factory. So let's have a look at what that's going to look like. Well, we've set up our Mark III miner. We've got it overclocked to be able to get... Oh, we don't have this set right. Let's change that to 780 items per minute. So we're going to be coming 780 items per minute down this Mark V conveyor line. And this is the path we are tracking for being able to get out here. I did put a Mark III conveyor down here just in case we did decide that we wanted to get some more quartz. And also, 
right here is where that normal SAM deposit is that we don't know what this does yet. I'm assuming this is going to be something that is in uh, when they release for 1.0. So technologies to come in the future. But then our path heads up this way and we make our way through the cave system here past where we had to destroy all those boulders and stuff to be able to get through. There was a couple more that I ended up having to blow out to be able to get the uh, floor plan and everything, uh, our foundation plan all flowing through here. I did use some curves and stuff to be able to gently get everything all lined up properly and have it all flow out this way. And then we come down this way. There's a slight little correction here because when you're using all the curves and stuff, the world grid doesn't end up lining up exactly perfectly. Um, so there's a little correction that was put in here so that we're back lined up with the world grid again. And now we are at our location where we're going to set up this tower. So along with some raw quartz, we also need some limestone. And of course, we had all of this limestone that was all pumped over for our concrete factory. We set aside two feeds of that that's going to be for our cheap silica factory. So of course, we've conveyed it all out, curved it around this way, and then it wraps around the outside of our train line here. And then we push it all over to be able to um, get to the base of where our tower is going to be and combine it with our raw quartz that's coming in from that K system that's over there. So now we have all of our raw materials here. What are, what is the floors going to look like? What is the structure going to look like to be able to make all the cheap silica? All right, logistically, we need to figure out what we are going to be doing with all of these materials. And so what I've done is we've got our lower feed room each floor is going to have a input logistics distribution floor uh, that's going to handle basically we've got our pure quartz coming in this way and it's going to split to each side because we don't need as much sorry not pure quartz raw quartz coming in here and it's going to split to be able to handle each side of this tower that's being built and then there's a separate line of limestone for each side that ends up because it's a uh, there's significantly more limestone required than there is uh, of the raw quartz to be able to make our cheap silica. So that's what our logistics distribution looks like. And then the next level up is our actual assemblers up here that are going to be making everything. So the inputs all feed in. And then, of course, it is 10 raw quartz per 60 i have it slightly underclocked so that we can get equal distribution of the amount of materials that we've got and of course that is making 23.33 repeated cheap silica per minute per device and with the amount of raw materials we have coming in that's going to end up equaling 13 segments of this floor assembly that we have set up here where it's our input floor and then our six assemblers all combined, and then we'll have our output logistics all managed to be able to accumulate all of our cheap silica. So let's have a look at what this is gonna look like when it's all said and done. Now I give you cheap silica heights, 13 floors of assemblers running at 100%, making all of our cheap silica. We end up with one exit point here that is 780 items per minute, we get another one just over on this side that is 780 items per minute. And then we have a small little bit of leftover here that's getting dumped into awesome sinks. So, and then of course we got an awesome sink set up for any excess materials that might be flying along here. They can get dumped in to that awesome sink so that we're, you know, making away on those tickets, but 13 floors. We'll just call it cheap silica heights, I guess. I think it's probably the tallest tower I have built to this point. And that's, you know, even dwarfing our uh, quick wire assembly that's way over on the far side of the map. I don't even know. I'm, I'm not even going to take a guess that I can actually zoom in and see that tower from here. I'm going to say it probably does not show up in the render and the off in the distance. Nope, doesn't look like it does. If it does, it might be just peeking through right there, but that also could be the water distribution that is uh, up on that plateau over there. So 
This one, yeah, we definitely got some height here. That's that's topping that for sure. So from Cheap Silica Heights, now we are heading off to where we are going to build our crystal oscillators. Let's go have a look at that. So now finding the perfect location for building our crystal oscillators, we need to have a look at what we're going to be dealing with. So if we go down to the crystal oscillator selection, and I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, it's this one is the one that I'm doing. So we need quartz crystal, which is being manufactured right over that way, just on the other side of that little cl cliff face. We also need cabling, which is being made right over there that we'll be able to bring down along this way. And we need reinforced iron plate, which is being manufactured right there. So we're just kind of splitting the difference here. So we'll build a factory line out here that will be able to take care of all the manufacturers that we're going to need for building our crystal oscillators. First things first, what's this factory going to look like? Well, we've got eight manufacturers all lined up here set up with the recipe for crystal oscillators and uh, it, it's it's a pretty simple little factory when you're dealing with manufacturers it is it is quite easy to you know just build them so that they're in a nice long straight line it just makes things so much easier to have to deal with the logistics rather than trying to alternate switching sides it can get very confusing um, so we just have them sitting here in a straight line, nothing fancy about it, and it will be able to produce all of our crystal oscillators, which will come through at 18 per minute, and I'm being attacked. I want to be attacked. I'm sick of the monsters. Anyhow, let's get some logistics on this thing. So the best way to deal with the logistics um, for manufacturers is doing them in a tiered distribution. Of course, the lowest tier, you're going to be using your conveyor line to feed in. If I could actually click on it properly. There we go. Lowest tier is going to be feeding in off of a conveyor. And then your next tier, you're going to... If you click on your actual splitter and then come down and twist it around and click, it will actually link and you can do a two... Okay, that mob, I got to I gotta get rid of it. It's... Oh, I'm falling. I'm falling to my doom. He's just not a friendly dude, this guy. And why? Wait, is it a hog that shoots? What's going on here? Why? Why is this a thing? We're, oh, no, there's a spitter and a hog. No. Oh, my life is doomed. There's two spitters. No. Okay, where'd the hog go? Where'd the hog go? I don't have much health left. I'm doomed. Oh. All right, before I was so rudely interrupted by my untimely death by some spitters and that alpha hog, uh, I was explaining basically how you get these little stubby elevators in here. So basically, if you want to do a too high elevator, first click on your splitter and then pull it down until you hear it link with the piece of machinery and click away and that will give you your too high otherwise if you were to place a conveyor anywhere it's it's three high and kind of unavoidable uh, but if you have it where it links then you get that too high assembly and then you can continue on with the rest of the distribution on this so um the whole idea with this tiered distribution is we'll be able to feed our raw materials in conveyor wise the bottom conveyor will take care of all of the uh, the lower items. So one item gets feed, fed in through there and then inputs in via conveyor into our manufacturer. And then of course, we're using our elevators to link in and do our other two distributions. So let me finish getting all of our input logistics in here. We'll just get all the logistics done and we'll have a look at what this is going to be for a, uh, a finished factory. And I give you crystal oscillator manufacturing all set up here. We've got our input lines of cable, quartz crystal, and reinforced iron plate. 
all being fed in and distributed equally along each of our production lines. And then outputted, they, they're heading out this side and then they're just getting dumped into an awesome sink over here for now until we end up needing them later on in our Mega Factory 2.0 construction. So now, the next thing we got to deal with is going to be our heavy modular frames. Well, heavy modular frames, that's going to be what? Modular frames, uh, it's going to be steel pipe and concrete and encased. I'm using an alternate recipe for it, so um, let's go figure out what the best location is for being able to pull that off. I kind of really didn't have to go far to figure out where we wanted to do this. Our heavy modular frames are being made right over here. And we could just feed it down this way and drop it down. And then we could just build in this area here our... I think we only need like seven manufacturers for the amount of heavy modular frames that we're going to need. So then it's just a matter of pulling our steel content from over that way, bring it this way. I think I even have access to concrete over there because of our train system that's running along. So we'll just pull that concrete, we'll pull the steel pipe, and we'll pull our um, encased industrial beams from over there, combine them with the modular frames to be able to make our heavy modular frames. Okay, so I've managed to gather up our conveyor lines here, and we've got them all feeding down. We've got our concrete line, we've got our steel pipeline, and we have our encased industrial beams they're all feeding down this way and then coming from the basically our iron factory is basically all i could deal with it's because it's iron rods iron plates screws they have our uh reinforced iron plates and modular frames are all being built over here we've got the conveyor line there that i actually you know what did i finish building it pretty sure i did let's have a look here did i add that last still no, I did not add the last little bit of conveyor. Let us do that now so that we can make sure that everything is down where we need it. So we're going to pull this off this way. It's going to come down here and we'll connect that. And bam, we've got our modular frames now all being pumped down. So that's our input, getting our input lines here to where we need to set everything up. So what is the factory going to look like and what's the recipe we're going to use? We are going to use, let's select our recipe, we're going down to, we're using heavy encased frames. It's an alternate recipe that requires modular frames, it requires beams, or it encased industrial beams, steel pipe, and concrete that we're going to be pulling this off with. So uh, we only need seven constructors for the amount that we need to be able to make. And then, of course, we're doing a four-tier distribution of the materials. So, again, like I was showing you earlier with the crystal oscillators, the first line is going to be a conveyor in, and then we are going to switch to elevators down. And if you click it, it will lock into place. And just like that, so we'll be able to input in our lines like so. And they will equally distribute our materials into the, the manufacturers. So let's have a look at what this is going to be like when it's all done. And we now have our completed manufacturing line for making our heavy modular frames. All seven manufacturers are pumping it out. They are crafting away until we end up with full inventories. I'm not going to bother throwing an awesome sink on here because uh, pretty quick, this is all going to have to get pushed into making our fuse modular frames. So it could just sit there for like that for now. Input lines are all full. We are cooking along. And with that, we have completed another episode of Satisfactory Update 8 in our Mega Factory 2.0 build. Reach down, hit that like button on the video. Leave a comment on the video. Let me know what you think of our manufacturing that we've got set up here. Our cheap silica heights tower that's over on the far side. Our crystal oscillator manufacturing. Everything bit by bit is slowly pulling together and we're starting to get everything we need. All the resources required to be able to pull off our nuclear factory that we're going to be building. So we are getting there closer and closer. Um, If you haven't yet... Subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Reach down, hit that subscribe button, and also ring that notification bell so you can be notified when I have uploaded a new video. 
And we all know how well those notifications work. So feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter slash X and threads. With that all said, guys, you have yourself a good one and we will see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.